Hey Penguins, we can't wait to see you back on campus in August. A lot has changed since we left in March. The worldwide pandemic has adjusted every facet of life as we knew it, but we're committed to a safe and healthy environment for your academic success. What can you expect when attending in-person classes? A range of new protocols are being put in place to limit the spread of germs. Before coming to campus, don't forget to perform a daily health assessment, making sure your temperature is not above 100.4 degrees and that you are not exhibiting COVID-19 symptoms. If you don't have the ability to take your temperature from home, we have temperature screening stations positioned in various locations across campus. They're easy to use. Just point the thermometer at your forehead and press the button for an accurate reading. Disinfectant spray and paper towels are located next to the temperature station. Please be sure to sanitize when you're finished so it's clean for the next person to use. Remember, if your temperature is over 100.4 degrees, please stay home and contact your doctor or healthcare provider. Students should also contact the Office of Student Outreach and Support and employees should inform their supervisor. Upon entering your classrooms, you'll notice the tables and desks have been adjusted to maintain the proper social distance space between you and your peers. You will be required to sanitize your desk with provided disinfectant spray and paper towels before and after use. Face coverings are critical to minimizing risks to others and yourself. And don't forget to keep your distance, maintaining six feet between you and others. In addition to these precautions, you can also find hand washing units and hand sanitizer in locations all across campus. The changes made in the classroom are also based on the CDC recommendations to ensure the amount of students in a room is not over the recommended capacity. Each classroom, lab, or learning space will vary based on these requirements. We want you to feel safe coming back to campus. Please be sure to check your email and the YSU website for regular updates made to the requirements of returning to campus safely. The classroom may look different, but the quality of your education will remain the same. We look forward to seeing you on campus again in August. Stay well and go Penguins. Hey Penguins, so good to be back with you. I remember when we were in the middle of our spring semester and the first time we had our Facebook live stream, YouTube, and we were talking about the fact that we had 50 days that we really needed to buckle down and our faculty did an amazing job and our IT people and, and uh, our academic continuity team with Hillary and Jessica and all of the people and then all of you students finished strong spring semester, class of 2020 graduated, and then we said, you know, we're going to have about 100 days after the school year is over that we really have to do a great job. We have to do a great job of mitigating this disease and, and keeping our social distancing and, and our masks and, and uh, washing our hands and all the rest, and, and I know you've been working hard on that, and now we're about 30 days away from the beginning of school, so we want to get back together it's amazing all of the work that has been done this summer to prepare us for a great start on August 17th. But also there's been a lot of activity on campus this summer, uh, some of it remotely. Good news, our summer school enrollment, FTE, full-time equivalencies, was up 7.8%. So there was more students taking more classes and so hopefully they're doing a great job finishing those up and, and uh, thanks for continuing to progress toward your degree. Uh, there's been a lot of campus activity with projects. Uh, Fifth Avenue, if you haven't been up by campus, Fifth Avenue is clearly under construction and it's going to be a little bit of a nuisance this fall, but it'll be a, a welcome nuisance to be back and navigating all of that. Our Excellence Training Center, they're on the corner of Fifth and Commerce. You'll really see that coming underway and, and uh, that's going to be an extraordinary building. Uh, for some of you that uh, spend some time in Folk Hall, the Honors College students, uh, we, you'll have a brand new roof on Folk Hall uh, when you return. Physical therapy students, uh, Kushwa has got a whole new look that I think you'll be excited to, about all that's going on there. Both of our pedestrian bridges uh, had some maintenance, so they're going to be ready for you to come to campus. And, and speaking of coming to campus, uh, two of the lots are getting a brand new resurfacing, that M70 over there just south of McDonald's there, uh, the big tailgate lot. Uh, that'll have a new surface. And then the one just a little bit south of the edge, uh, that's a fairly new lot, will have a brand new surface. So we've been working hard uh, while you've been gone, and uh, we can't wait for you to come back. And so we want to we spend a little bit of time 
talking about what we've been doing to prepare for your return to campus. Uh, we've been spending a lot of time with the state and local health departments because they will be important partners as we come back safely and, and make sure that our community is safe as we come back in with a lot more of us here and so forth. Uh, the governor has been outstanding. In fact, I think he's got some announcements tonight to, just to re reinforce the fact that we've really got to finish this summer strong with doing a good job of, of keeping that curve flattened and getting these little spikes uh, pushed down a little bit. And, and uh, the Inter University Council, which is the group of 14 public four-year universities, for a while there, probably in May and June, we were meeting on the phone twice a week, uh, whether it's the provost meeting or the student affairs people meeting, the president's meeting, uh, the finance officers, the legal councils, uh, spending a lot of time really putting our heads together, collaborating. How are we going to make sure that all 14 universities can have a safe return to campus? And last week, Governor DeWine uh, presented the CDC guidelines and the state guidelines, and, and we're uh, all set up uh, to be able to follow all of those things and keep everyone safe and, and, uh, and have everyone come back to a, a wonderful YSU. And then we had some focus groups. About 50 people have spent all summer long, whether it was working through some of the financial realities or working through the safe return to campus or working through communication like this, trying to get the word out uh, that we're going to be ready to go. Uh, they've been working extremely hard. It's been amazing to watch the Office of Academic Affairs. Provost Brian Smith, uh, Jen Pentar, and Kevin Ball, our Associate Provost, the Deans, the Department Chairs. Uh, think about this. We've got 4,000 classes that we had to figure out how we could get those classes put together in a safe manner and in a manner that uh, will be high quality instruction. And, and so Chancellor Gardner, from the Ohio Department of Higher Education has been an amazing uh, collaborator with us. So we're excited. We're ready to go. We know that we're prepared. There's no question about it. We're going to outline that preparation here today, have a little conversation. I'm looking forward to a lot of your questions. But we also know that we're going to need to adjust. That's just the way it is. Any game plan that we ever put together, uh, you know, we had a great game plan. We prepared it, but sometimes we had to adjust. You don't know what's going to happen in this world. We don't know uh, what curveballs get thrown, but we have our adjustment uh, capabilities. Now it's the time we're going to need to come back and execute. We know our goal. Our goal is that you're safe, YSU campus is safe, the employees, the faculty, the staff, students, the community is safe. You know, that's obviously goal number one. Goal number two, and I know you're thinking about this, is you want to have meaningful interaction with each other. You want to have that interaction with your faculty. I know that that's something that that last eight weeks of the semester was a little bit more difficult. I know you count on your faculty. I know you have questions for them. You lean on their guidance and their understanding. And so our second goal is to make sure that we've got a situation this fall where we do have meaningful interaction. And then Thirdly, we want to progress. We don't want our degrees slowed down. We want you folks to keep moving toward your degree and have you continue to grow as people and, and be great, responsible citizens as you go out from here and really become the future leaders of our world. So I'm going to go to the next slide, and they've done a great job. I, I must say that uh, uh, Katie and Shannon and Becky and Ron and the whole crew have put together a great PowerPoint for me to kind of talk through and then we'll get to your questions. But fall semester starts August 17th and we can't wait to get back here. We can't wait to see your smiling faces. Between now and August 17th, we'll probably have another one of these Facebooks. I think next week we might even have an Instagram get together, which I don't know how to do an Instagram get together, but they're going to teach me how to do that. And, and so I think we're going to have that. And then probably the following week, maybe do another one of these uh, live stream Facebook, YouTube type things and give you constant communication and information. Just to see how we're navigating, uh, you know, through all the things that possibly happen. But there are uncertainties, but we're ready for every one of them. Our faculty has done an amazing job of positioning themselves 
Uh, all of the people here on campus have got things. You'll be amazed at some of the safety things we have in place. So your first question I know is what about my classes? We've been hearing that constantly. How are my classes? What are they going to look like? And so on the slide, as I was mentioning, we're, we had 4,000 classes that our faculty had to decide what's the, the best way with the highest quality instruction, the best interaction, the best way to provide the material you, you need to progress in your degree. And so we've come up with, on this slide, really five different ways that we'll be taking class. From left to right, there's the traditional campus, which is your basic face-to-face. -face. The second one our Office of Academic Affairs has entitled the Agile Hybrid Campus. The third way that you'll be taking class is the virtual campus. Uh, the fourth way will be the online live. And then the fifth way would be a normal web-based online uh, class that you've probably had one or two of those uh, in your past. So let's talk about the traditional classes. So that's your 100% in person. You'll meet at the regularly scheduled times. Uh, that's the way that I think 90% of our courses w were held uh, prior to the pandemic. When you look at your schedule, and you're going to be able to go on your portal and look at your schedule beginning this coming Monday, July 20th, and if you see a TR, traditional, you know that that particular class will be held in a traditional face-to-face -face manner. And then the second one is the Agile Hybrid Campus. And that, that's that you'll be coming to campus, typically once a week or more, at the regularly scheduled day and time. You'll remain in the class with a combination, uh, the remaining class time will be a combination of, of video conferencing, recorded lecture, other instructional activity, group activity, whatever it happens to be. And when you go on your schedule and you see an AC, you'll know that that class is going to be on the Agile hybrid campus that our faculty has created. The third one is the virtual campus. And in the virtual campus, the student will attend all classes at the regularly scheduled day and times, but will have the option to attend a combination of an on-campus or through video conferencing. Students could, could choose to only attend through video conferencing if they would like. And so if you go on your schedule on the portal and you see a VC, you'll know that that class makeup will be a virtual campus. The next one is online live. That means it's 100% online that you attend at the regularly scheduled day and time <coughs> through video conferencing. Instructors can choose to use a combination of video conferencing, recorded lectures, other instructional activity, some group chat type things. But when you go on your schedule and you see an OM online will be the way that that class will be. And then the fifth way will be web-based. It's 100% online, no set day or time. Students don't need to be on campus at all. And you'll have certain things that you need to meet, certain timelines and you'll handle those from a web-based standpoint. So that was a quick run through the classes, and I know that that's what's most important to you. So July 20th, check on your portal, and you'll know which of your classes will be which different type of modality. Now, if you have questions, knowing that I probably didn't explain those as well as I could have or should have, uh, any questions you have about your classes, feel free to call the Penguin Service Center. Any changes in the delivery method will be noted uh, on your schedule. Any, anything that you need to do, you call those folks. They're trained to know exactly what's going on in your class, and they'll have all the answers to your questions. So that's to answer the question, what about my classes, okay? So we'll be able to take some other questions. I'm sure I didn't answer every question you have about your class. But let's, let's move on and talk about the fact that you can feel 100% confident that when you return to campus, 
we've taken the measures that we need to take that will meet all CDC guidelines, all state guidelines, uh, in concert with our local health department. We've done everything, and it's amazing. That focus group uh, did an amazing job of, of outfitting our campus facilities. They've all been inspected. They've been approved uh, by the YSU Office of Environmental, Occupational Health and Safety. Uh, we have building leads. There's four people in each building that will handle anything as time goes. So you, will, you can really feel confident that the facilities that you're coming back to, and I know you're excited to come back because we are so excited to see your smiling faces. It's been fun being on campus, but it's been lonely. Believe me, we, we would rather have you here. And so as you come here, there's no question uh, that we'll be ready for you. And so we decided, how are we gonna make sure we take care of one another? And so we came up with, or I shouldn't say we, our focus group came up with the thought that, you know, it's really this simple. For Pete's sake, we've got to protect our fellow penguins. It, everything we think about is what can we do to make sure we're taking care of one another? All of the students, all of the faculty, all of the staff, anyone that's on our campus, and then really anyone that's in the community as we leave the campus or we go interact with the various things that we do when we're not in class and we're not studying, we're going to make sure, for Pete's sake, we are going to protect one another. It's interesting, February 26th, you, you might not have known this, this is a, a little known fact. February 26th is National For Pete's Sake Day. You might not have known that, but there is a national day for Pete's sake. And isn't it ironic that the state of Ohio has a bill out right now where someone has proposed that February 26th in Ohio is Amy Acton Day. And Dr. Amy Acton uh, was our health director of the state of Ohio, YSU and Neomed grad. And so I think it's pretty fitting that for Pete's sake day on February 26th and Amy Acton day are gonna be one and the same. And that we're gonna remember every day we're here on campus for Pete's sake, we're gonna take care of one another. So the first thing we're gonna ask of all of ours, all of ourselves is that we're all gonna take the penguin protection pledge and it's really simple I'll protect myself because that's my responsibility I'll protect others I'll protect our campus and I'll protect our community we've got to make sure that as we come back to campus that we do an amazing job we want to be the best in the country we want to be the best in the world at coming back to face-to-face -face interaction, having time with our faculty, having time with one another. It's going to look a little different. I mean, there's no question about it. Things, activities are going to be not maybe exactly as they've been. Classes won't look exactly uh, the way they've looked in the past, but we're going to be back together, and that's what's most important to us. And so we're all going to take that pledge that we're going to protect ourselves, we're going to protect others, we're going to protect our campus, and we're going to protect our community as we go back and spend time in our community. So for Pete's sake, the first thing we do each day is we take a daily health assessment. One of the things we've been doing, those of us that have been on campus all summer, is when I come in the side door at Todd Hall, I take my temperature. And for like four straight days, it was 97.2. And I thought, well, this thing's gotta be broke. I mean, how can your temperature be the same thing every day? Well, then the next day it was 90. Then I knew it was broke because if it was 90, I was going to be broke. But come in and you take your temperature. Uh, hopefully you'll take it, you know, prior to coming to campus because if you have a temperature that's higher than 100.4, we don't want you to come to campus. We don't want the employees to come to campus. We don't want any penguins coming to campus. So our daily health assessment is, number one, do you feel sick? Do you feel like you have a fever? If you do, you need to stay home. Obviously, you then need to communicate with whatever responsibilities you have. You'll still be responsible for making sure that you uh, stay in great communication with your faculty member, your advisors, all of the people that uh, you're interacting with. Is your temperature above 100.4? Because if it is, then, you know, we've got a problem and, you know, you shouldn't be here on campus and we've got to attend to you. Number three there is do you have the COVID-19 symptoms. 
and you can see those various things, fevers and chills and, and fatigue and muscle aches, and, and, and you can read the list there. The fourth thing that you want to assess every day is, you know, have you had any contact with someone? And if so, to protect yourself and to protect others on campus and to protect uh, our community, you need to stay put if you've had, ha have you traveled outside the United States? Uh, uh, have you been ordered for quarantine? If the answer to any of those is yes, as is on the, on the screen here, uh, please make sure you're not in campus. Make sure you get a hold of whoever you need to get a hold of. And as it says on the campus, uh, it's in awfully small. When you get old, you, you can't see as well, but I hope you can read this. Uh, YSU students should notify the Office of Student Outreach and Support at the website that you see on the screen, and the SOS director will give you any instructions. So, protection pledge of taking care of one another, taking care of the community, begins with assessing yourself before you come to campus. The second one that we'll be involved with is, you've been hearing this a, a million times, is that we've got to keep our distance. So for Pete's sake, stay at least six penguins apart, okay? There is, all the data shows that if we will stay apart and we won't put others in danger, we then will not carry it back into our community. So we're gonna commit ourselves as much as we can. We know there'll be moments where you walk by someone or whatever it happens to be, but we're gonna work hard. We've set up your classrooms such that you're gonna be at least six feet apart, but that is an important protection against infection. So for Pete's sake, stay six penguins apart. The next one is for Pete's sake, wear your face covering. So I, I brought some of the various ones because you know I'm kind of a, you know, I, I like a stylish kind of guy. So I had the black shirt, so I, I wore the black one today. Or, you know, I've got the black one with the YSU that's kind of on the right side, so that way when I'm talking to anyone to the right, I'm doing a little bit of advertising and so forth. I've got the YSU Penguin one, another YSU Penguin one, and then the YSU Foundation has made the shield. And so what I've heard, I don't know if you can hear me, but what I've heard is if you wear a mask and a shield, it's like double duty. But whatever it happens to be, we're gonna commit to one another that if we're not alone and we're an employee in the office and there's anyone near you, or if you're a student on campus and you're in the classroom or you're in a building with anyone else, we're gonna, for Pete's sake, wear our face coverings. Now, when you're out walking and you're by yourself and so forth, you know, these aren't that much fun to wear and they get warm and, and all those kinds of things. So, uh, but the rule is wear your face covering. For Pete's sake, wear it. We're gonna pledge to one another that we're gonna wear our face coverings. For Pete's sakes, wash your hands. A lot of you I know are carrying around the hand sanitizer. That's great. We have hand san sanitizer all over the place. But we also happen to have 10 different hand washing machines that were invented right here in Youngstown, Ohio, in New, New Middletown, Ohio, that have all the YSU graphics and they're gonna be strategically located uh, all over campus. In fact, I've got a list here of, of where we're gonna have these. If I can find it, here we go. Let me get a little picture of it here. You'll see that it's about 84 inches tall. It has four units around it and it's no touch. You go up and you put your hand under the soap dispenser and you get the soap. You put your hand under the faucet, the water begins. You put your hand up near the paper towel dispenser and the paper towel comes down. So every time you pass by one of those, what's cool about these hand washing units is that 720 penguins can wash their hands every hour. And we're gonna have 10 of these hand washing units strategically put all over campus, which means every hour, 7,200, 7,200 penguins are gonna be able to wash their hands. So we're gonna pledge to one another that we're gonna keep our hands clean because we know, again, the science and the data tells us, you know, keep your hands clean, keep your face covered, 
keep socially distanced. We're going to have, and I think one is already in the lobby of the Williamson College of Business. Uh, one is in the lobby of Moser Hall. There are three different of, of these hand washing units in Kilcauley Center, Rec Center, the Cove, uh, in one of the main areas down there, I think, by Jamba Juice and that type of thing. There's one over in the Watts for those of you that will be having an activity there. Right now, there's currently one at the north end of Stambaugh Stadium because we've had about 40 or 50 student athletes back doing voluntary workouts. And what we've been saying to them is, hey, when you come to campus, wash your hands so that you're protecting others that you might get near. When you leave to go home from campus, wash your hands so you don't take those germs with you out to our community. We're going to have one on the Wick deck uh, bridge coming across from the Wick parking deck. And again, the mentality, the culture we want to build with our Penguin Pledge is that on our way into campus, even though you know we're starting the day and, and we're all freshened up, when we get into campus, we're going to wash our hands. It's just going to become a habit. And on our way home to get in our car, we're going to wash our hands so that we're protecting our community. There'll be a unit uh, in the Beagley College of Education, and there'll also be a hand washing unit uh, over in the uh, Fifth Avenue parking deck. So those pledges that we're making to take care of one another, to take care of each other, are critical. We've got to make sure that we protect our fellow penguins. Now, there's some other areas that we need to protect one another. Some of you will be living in the residence halls. Some of you will be living in the edge and the flats and the Erie Terminal and the lofts and the courtyard and all those kinds of things. Uh, we're going to have our residence halls at a little bit of a reduced capacity. They won't be, you know, they won't be empty, but we are thinning out the population, again, to do a good job. Uh, we're modifying some of the uh, double occupancy rooms into single rooms for some people that have requested that. Uh, and we're going to make sure we move into the residence halls in an orderly fashion. We don't want everyone showing up the same day and, and having a, a big, large group gathering and so forth. So the first year students are going to be moving in Monday, August 10th and Thursday, August 13th. The returning students are going to move in Friday, August 14th and Sunday, August 16th which gives us a chance to keep people spread out, gives us a chance to do a lot of sanitizing in between the move-in days and so forth. So keep that in mind and, and keep in touch with the people in the residence halls. And I know each of the apartment complexes are going to have some various uh, protocols as you move back into there. And uh, so make sure you keep in touch with them. Campus recreation, uh, we plan to reopen on August 16th. But again, they'll have a strategy They'll have distancing. There might not be as many people in the weight room or as many people on the jogging track or in the basketball courts. Again, now we're going to be back here together. It's going to look a little different, and we're going to really need to count on you uh, to keep these protocols that our people have worked so hard to, to create because we know they're safe if we'll execute. If we follow the program, we know we can keep you safe. Uh, campus food service, some people like to ask about. Uh, tentatively planning to open retail and dining facilities in late July and early August. Uh, we're going to reduce the number of people that can be in the various dining rooms. Uh, additional safety measures to lessen person-to-person -person contact. Plexiglass uh, transaction guards, like I'm sure you've seen at some restaurants and so forth. Additional hand washing opportunities. Face coverings. Now, obviously, when you're eating, you've got to take it off, but, you know, when you're coming in line and you're walking by people, we've really got to be disciplined about wearing those face coverings. Uh, Duncan is tentatively opening July 20th. Uh, Chick-fil-A is tentatively opening August 3rd. And Barnes & Noble, the YSU bookstore, is opening and following all the safety guidelines and so forth. Face coverings uh, in all these uh, facilities will be mandatory for the employees and we really need the students, except for when you're eating or, or whatever, to make sure uh, students will be encouraged to purchase uh, books online and have them shipped to them. And so, as you can see, we've got a lot of things in place. I'm so proud of the way that our entire campus, 
whether they were working remotely from home. Uh, the number of Zoom meetings that our people have had, uh, it, it's been amazing because YSU is passionate about getting you back here. YSU is passionate about doing it safely. YSU is passionate about making sure that we have a good impact on the community and us coming back does not have a negative effect um, on the virus rate in the community. So we've gone over a lot of things. There's really in-depth on ysu.edu slash coronavirus, but all this information you can possibly think of uh, is on those websites. Again, I know your classes are the most important thing, so on Monday, check your portal and your class list and you'll have a good idea of how your class is being delivered. And then on Friday, July 24th, check your schedule again and you'll see that the first iteration of what the rooms will be will be entered in on Friday, July 24th. But you, ha you have to know that we're going to have to be a little bit flexible with maybe some rooms changing because we are going to be committed to keeping that distance, making sure that our students are six feet apart, making sure there's plexiglass, making sure that our faculty is safe, making sure that we can deliver that high quality instruction that I know our faculty is ready to deliver and that's why you came here is to have those great experiences and obtain that great wisdom and, and knowledge and so forth. So make sure if you have any other questions after we're done with getting some of the uh, audience here to ask questions uh, that you feel free to go to the YSU edu slash coronavirus or call the Penguin Service Center anytime you'd like. That's what they're there for, to answer your questions, to give you that confidence that we're ready for you Penguins and we can't wait to have you back here and I guess with that I'll move it on to the slide that uh, is questions and I know we had a bunch of questions that were even asked before, is that right Katie? That were even asked before and I think you're going to Give me uh, a little laptop there, and thanks so much, Katie. And so here's the first question that was sent three days ago, maybe, or, or I'm not sure when. We've been excited about the number of questions you've had. Here's the question. If our professors choose to te teach web-based, even though it was not previously planned to be so, will we be charged the $100 fee? And the answer to that is no, you will not. Second question, what about classes with field work? And so the answer to that question is to the extent that it can be done safely, it will continue. Some of you in the uh, Patante College of Health and Human Services knew that we had to adjust a little bit. I know the nurses and the respiratory therapists and the dental hygienists and the uh, dietitians and so forth had to adjust a little last spring. Uh, I think like dealing with this virus, we know how to handle this virus a little bit better. The hospitals have really grown with their understanding of how to handle this virus. Uh, the same is true with the facilities and, and those of you that have internships and, and those kinds of things. Uh, as long as the facility you're going to is following the same types of protocols that, that we expect and the state expects, uh, you'll be able to continue to do that. The next question, how are the rooms going to be disinfected between classes? And here's the answer. Disinfecting wipes and sprays will be provided in classrooms that are used for face-to-face -face instruction. And faculty and students will be responsible for wiping down their work areas at the end of class. A little bit of part of our pledge. You know, I want to take care of the next person that sits in that seat. So when the class ends and the faculty member says, okay, it's time to, it's time to go, uh, we'll give you plenty of time to make sure that the space that you just uh, were taking advantage of, that you'll have all the disinfectant and the wipes and so forth, and, and uh, you'll take care of that for the, for the next penguin that comes in, and, and uh, we've made that pledge to one another uh, that we're going to be able to do that. The next question, do we have to quarantine when we move in if we live in a different state? Not at this point, but this is a good time to, to I guess, reinforce the fact that 
the guidelines and, and the protocols and the things that we have to follow are ever changing. At this moment, the answer is no. We're following all CDC and state guidelines, and at this point, you don't have to. But if it gets to the point where the CDC in the state of Ohio or the Mahoney County uh, says that that's something we need to do, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but not at this point. The next question, how many hand-washing stations are there? We have 10 of the new large hand-washing stations. They each have four sinks, so four people at a time, socially distanced. Uh, they'll be all over campus, and as I mentioned, theoretically, over 7,000 of us can wash our hands every hour, which has got to help. And you know what I predict? Not that I'm a doctor of any kind, but I predict our flu season could be positively impacted if we'll continue strong to our pledge of washing our hands, social distancing, and having our face coverings. And by the way, obviously all the other bathrooms and sinks and so forth on campus, you can utilize that as well, and we will keep those very, very uh, disinfected and clean for you. Okay, the next question. Anything about international students? Uh, again, we're following the CDC guidelines, and as of today, an international student is a 14-day quarantine coming in uh, to the United States. So we'll follow that, and we'll make that possible. And uh, uh, again, that's fluid. I don't know for sure uh, how that's going to evolve. Here we are on July 15th. Uh, the first time we're sitting in class will be August 17th, so we've got 30 days or so. Uh, we'll keep you abreast of any adjustments that we need to make, and, and we're ready to make them because it's important to us to be back here together, and I know it's important to you. Next question was, so, and it's so with four O's, so, masks are going to be a requirement, right? The answer is yes. We're making that pledge that we're going to do what is identified as the safest thing to do for each other, the best way that we can get this virus behind us. You know, there's been a lot of neat news out there about these vaccines and these treatments. We know the hospitals have evolved amazingly with how they know how to treat this. If we'll do a great job, and, and that's why I say these next 30 days, even though you won't be in class, these next 30 days, be a leader out there in your community. Be a leader in your family. Do everything we can do to keep this thing squashed. My goal is that on August 17th, we're not even talking about spikes in Ohio or spikes in the United States. We're talking about that it's flattened or gone down. That's the kind of intent we have. We are so passionate about getting back here together that we have to remind ourselves, let's do everything we can do to make sure that we're back here, it's safe, and that you know what? We're going to squash this virus. Okay, here's the next question. How will this be laid out or reflect on attendance? If someone is showing signs, even if it's common cold symptoms, are they always supposed to stay home? Granted, it's their choice whether or not to attend. How will this hurt attendance rate? The answer to that question is students showing symptoms should notify the Office of Student Outreach and Support. And, and you know our faculty as well as I do. You know our faculty, first and foremost, are interested in your safety. I mean, that's, we're interested in their safety. So if you're not feeling well, if you've got that temperature, it might be common cold fever or whatever, uh, work through the, uh, the Student Outreach and Support Office, but I can assure you our faculty understand that this semester is going to look a little bit differently we're all going to have to be flexible. We're all going to have to do whatever it takes because our goal is for you to be successful in your class and do it safely. And so we're all going to work together uh, to make sure that happens. The next question, are you adjusting the calendar to be done at Thanksgiving? At this moment in time, that's not the plan. Our academic calendar is staying as it is. Uh, we've thought about that and we've talked about it and we don't have a huge magnitude of people who the first time they can get home is Thanksgiving. Uh, 
a lot of you have a chance to be home uh, more often. I think those of you that live here on campus, I really think this is probably the safest place for you to be for as much of the time as you can be. If you live in the courtyards or Leiden House or Kilcally House or the Edge or wherever, uh, you know, the more you can stay here in, in our little bubble, I think that's good. Uh, but we've decided at this moment that our calendar is going to stay the same. We want to make sure we get the high quality instruction. I worry a little bit sometimes if you try to tailor things down and try to make it convenient that we're not giving you everything that we can give you in each of our classes. So now, does that mean that it might change? Who knows? Uh, that, that flexibility, uh, that ability to be versatile and agile and so forth is going to be an important part of this semester and probably the whole year, quite honestly. Uh, but as of now, the answer is no. Next question, how do we find our course delivery method? So in your Penguin portal, we have a step-by-step -step on social media. Pretty soon we'll be putting it up. It will be in your student information under registration and active registration. So just however the way is you normally pull up your schedule to look at it, just look for the designation. Is it TR? Does that mean it's traditional? It's face-to-face? -face? Is it... Uh, AC is at our Agile Hybrid Campus. Um, but look on your schedule and you'll be able to find it. And, and if you know what, if you're like me and you're not very good at finding things, uh, call the Penguin Service Center. They'll walk you right through it. Click here, click there, and you'll be in good shape. Okay, next question. Are students allowed visitors and are they allowed to leave campus for a weekend? The answer is yes, no more than two guests per students, and they are allowing current students and family members uh, to be on campus. And so I don't know if the question is, are our students allowed to leave campus for the weekend? And the answer is yes, but we want to keep in mind our Penguin Pledge, so I don't want you to leave campus and go be with, you know, 4,000 people in a two-foot space, uh, you know, that's probably not the kind of activity that is going to be normal uh, in this fall semester. Uh, we're still going to have activities. They'll look a little bit different. We're going to have to be creative. Our student affairs people have got some neat things planned and so forth, but uh, we don't want to infringe on your life, but we want you to keep in mind we've made a pledge to one another that we're going to keep, keep each other safe, and we're going to keep our community safe, too. Next question, DeWine will be holding a meeting at 5.30 regarding all counties. What if he issues another stay-at-home order? Well, that would be a challenge, that's for sure. Uh, I don't know what the governor is going to say. I know that the governor is anxious uh, for the uh, 14 public universities uh, to get 14 four-year schools to get back in session and to be back here face-to-face. -face. He knows that as higher education goes in our state and, and the excellence that we develop and the scientists and the thinkers and the responsible citizens and the accountants and everyone else, we need that to have a great state. So I know the governor has really worked well with us. I don't anticipate you know, a stay-at-home order, but like anything else, whatever hand we're dealt, we're going to do what we have to do, uh, but uh, we're going to we're going to stay strong on the belief that... Now, he may come out and say, hey, we're going to get a little tougher on these masks. And then we're going to, you know, I think before he said masks were recommended, uh, he may come out a little stronger on the masks. Uh, he may come out and talk a little bit about some of the counties that have spiked a little bit, and we've got to uh, be leaders in, in getting that spike down. And that's why all of you watching today, the best thing you can do for YSU is be a great leader out there in the community and, and make sure that all of us are doing a better job uh, with all of those safety things. And we'll handle anything that comes our way because we're prepared for every scenario. So we'll, this will be a day-to-day -day type thing, but I think we're going to be just fine. Next question, is there a plan to roll back protocols as Ohio rolls back protocols? Hmm. I'm not sure which protocols, meaning if Ohio rolls back 
uh, mandatory masks, might we? Uh, perhaps. On the other hand, we might, you know, think to ourselves, you know, that we think it might be a little premature to do that because we pledge to keep one another safe. Uh, uh, but we'll always follow their guidelines, uh, and, but we'll always seek to be the best. And we want to have the safest campus in the state and the safest campus in the world. Um, and so we'll continue to talk with one another and, and, and think about what it is we need to do the best, to be the best we can be. Will music events still be held from Dana School of Music? Yes, following all the CDC and state guidelines. So you might not have a packed audience. You know, we might be given standards as to maximum. Right now, I think facilities are allowed maybe 50% of their capacity or something like that. As time goes, maybe it will become 75%, and maybe there'll be a moment where they say it's 25%. Uh, but the answer to the question, yes, Dana School. Uh, in fact, Dana School has been doing an amazing job with some of their virtual things. I've gotten more comments about the neat things that uh, the Dana School and the McDonough Museum and, and uh, people that uh, are fortunate to have talented university students and faculty who can create things. Uh, I've had people from all over the country tell me that they've been, been enjoying some of the things from the Cliff College. So the next one, if somebody with a lease at the courtyards ends up with all online classes, will they be able to get out of their lease? Uh, students would need to uh, talk to their management, uh, properties, people, but it's interesting. I just was talking to one of the property uh, owners, managers of one of the uh, public-private ones here on campus, and he said he was showing a family around on Sunday, and they loved the property, and they were going to sign up and so forth, and then uh, the question was asked, well, what if all my classes are online? Would it be okay if I still stayed because I think it's safer to be here than it is back with my parents or my grandparents or whatever? And, and the property owners said, of course. You know, we do believe that so many of those places have their own individual bathrooms and bedrooms and, and there is good natural social distancing and it is kind of a little bubble. Uh, so... Uh, Either way, regardless of your question about the apartments, you would need to check with your uh, management folks. Next question, if I'm not able to apply for loans because my co-signer has lost their job due to COVID-19 and I don't have enough for tuition with just my grants and scholarships, what should I do? Are there resources for people in my position? Two places that you can look immediately. Call financial aid which is 330-941-3505, or you can call that Penguin Service Center, and you, we know you know that number, 941-6000, and they could forward you to financial aid. But we've been fortunate. In the initial CARES Act, federal government provided funds for things that very way, and we've had lots and lots of students take advantage of some of that funding. Uh, we also have our YSU Foundation that increased our scholarship amount this year with these very kinds of things in mind. So make sure you get a hold of financial aid because uh, Elaine Roos and, and uh, Jim Stanger and, and Frank Scirocco and all those folks, they've been doing an unbelievable job of helping people out because we know this is a difficult situation, difficult time. Next question, are student employees returning to work in the fall? Yes, hallelujah. We've got a lot of work for you to do. I know some of you were able to work remotely uh, in the back half of the semester, uh, which we appreciated that because we needed your good work. Uh, there's been some work that's gone undone uh, this summer uh, when we haven't had student employees here. Uh, but yes, in the fall, uh, get back to uh, maybe the department you worked for and talk with them or go online and look for the student work opportunities and apply for those. But Yes, indeed, we will have students working back on campus. Next question, is the library going to be open regular hours and allow book rentals? The answer is yes. Our library has done a great job putting protocols into place, getting the facility set for social distancing and, and the right kinds of things. 
They may even be using some of the spaces. You'll be amazed at some of the spaces we're going to be using for classes. Uh, they might be some spots that you haven't been before because they're big open areas and we can keep you spread out and so forth. So uh, absolutely, I'm sure uh, you need to spend some time in the library. That, that's, that's part of being a college student. Next question, any word on athletics and how will seasons work? You know, we haven't had any definitive uh, things from our Horizon League conference yet, our Missouri Valley football conference yet. The NCAA has gotten some kind of preliminary guidelines for the fall sports that when they can come back. Currently, some of our student athletes have been back here just doing voluntary workouts about eight or nine people at a time, socially distanced and so forth. Uh, I would say though, if you've been paying attention to the national news and you've seen some of the conferences have decided to move their fall sports back a little bit, uh, whether it's pushing it back in the semester or it's uh, pushing it all the way to the spring semester. I think there's a lot of decisions to be made. I know we have a, a Horizon League President's Call on Monday, uh, which I know we're going to have this conversation. Uh, and I think uh, the following Wednesday or so, we have a Missouri Valley Football President's Call. And so, yeah, pay close attention to that. Uh, again, we don't know. But we're going to be ready for any game plan. We know if, if they let us uh, begin our fall sports when they were planned to be started, we'll be ready. And if they get pushed back, we'll have a plan for that. And if they get pushed back further, we'll have a plan for that. So stay tuned to see how the, uh, how the national news goes there. Next question, how are labs going to work for bio and chem? Safety and health plans have been developed in accordance with the CDC and state guidelines, and so we are able to hold labs. But again, it might not look exactly uh, the way that labs have looked before. You're going to be a little bit more sparse. I'm, I'm guessing you might rotate in a little bit, those kinds of things. But our faculty and our department chairs and our deans and our provost's office have been working, I can't tell you the number of hours they've been working, to make sure that the plan that we have in place for day one is ready. The plan for any adjustments we have to make is ready. We will be ready for anything and yes, you'll be able to have your labs. How will we find out what days we go to class if there is an Agile hybrid class? Great question. Professors will be in touch with their classes prior to the first day of class. So if you're an Agile, an AC, and have that question what day, you will get an email preliminarily from your faculty, uh, you know, A through H is here on Monday, I through S is here on Tuesday, whatever, uh, T through Z is here. However they decide to do it, they'll communicate that to you and, and you'll be ready to handle it. And, and that brings up another thing, I don't know if it'll be another question, but what if I have a face-to-face -face class and the next hour I have one that it, it's more technology-based? We're creating some spaces here on campus that if a person maybe doesn't have an apartment to go back to or a dorm room and doesn't want to drive home and then they have to come back for another class, we're going to have some spaces put aside for you uh, to make sure that you'll be able to handle this agile schedule, this different schedule, and, uh, and your faculty will do a great job of letting you know who, what, where, when. Uh, how will we find out what, okay, we already did that. If a widespread outbreak does occur on campus, would YSU close all in-person classes and resort to online classes like we did for spring? Well, things are always changing. We'll continue to do, obviously, whatever the CDC and the state tells us to do. Uh, we do have some plans for some resident students. If perhaps uh, someone tests positive, uh, that we'll have an infirmary type, uh, quarantine type facility. Uh, we've held back uh, one of our uh, apartment style uh, facilities for that. Uh, Eddie Howard, uh, who's our VP for Student Affairs, and, and Julie Gentile, who's our uh, Director of Occupational Environmental Health and Safety, uh, have also been in constant conversation with the health department and they've been talking with the Doubletree Hilton downtown to hold some rooms 
on a given floor, if that would possibly happen. Uh, believe me, no matter what happens, we have a plan for it. it. Our people have, they've been amazing at thinking about every what if, just like these questions or what if. Our people have been talking about all these what ifs. Next question, what about club sports and student organizations? Again, we're going to follow the CDC and state guidelines so that it's a safe experience. Exactly which sports, which numbers of people, all that type of thing, I think our uh, club sport department is still working on. And prior to the beginning of school, I think we're going to be able to, and it may be a little bit along the guidelines of intercollegiate athletics because philosophically, uh, when some decisions are made about numbers of people, types of sports, and that type of thing, we'll follow all of that but we'll make sure that we get you uh, uh, the information. You can be sure the running club is probably good because you can just run faster than everyone else and stay socially distanced, but I don't know about the rest of them for sure. Will the rec center be operational so I can ball? Oh, I'd love to know who this is to find out if they really can ball. But anyway, when the rec center opens August 16th, basketball will not be available. Currently, that's part of the CDC and state guidelines. We'll see as time goes, but that kind of reflects back to what we've been saying all along. Let's do an amazing job at keeping this thing flattened and getting rid of these spikes and so forth so that we can start getting some of these guidelines relaxed. That's the goal. So the better we do the next 30 days, you might get a chance to ball sooner. The better we do when we come back to campus, you might get a chance to ball. And you send me an email because I'm going to come over and see if you can really ball or not. We'll see. Okay, next one. Is it up to professors to decide if they will hold office hours in person? In general, what will office hours look like? Will they be online? The answer to the question is yes, that will be an individual decision between the professor, the faculty member, and their class. According to you know, what the group decides to do, what people are comfortable with, uh, obviously uh, a lot of times if we just have one question, it's easy to do it electronically. If we need to talk in more depth, you know, maybe we need to schedule some in person, but that will be up to the faculty member number one and the student and the conversation that would ensue number two. If move in for first year students is August 10th and August 13th, how do we know which day our child is supposed to move in? Great question. The answer. The email will go out this Friday, which is the 20th, or is this Friday the 20th? No, 17th, okay. This Friday, an email will go out to all of our resident students as to which day they should report for move-in. Great question. Next question, wait a minute, no more questions? Come on, you guys gotta have more questions. Man, well, I want you to think, uh, uh, about how hard our people have worked getting ready, especially uh, the group that has got the safety things in mind and Julie Gentile and Eddie Howard and, and uh, John Hyden and, and gosh, I don't know who all, there's 10 people on that group. They've done an amazing job. Uh, say a little prayer for Vice President Howard. He lost his mom uh, this past weekend and, and uh, he's down uh, taking care of that and, and he's, he's worked night and day as has everyone uh, that's affiliated with YSU, but he's going through a tough time. So, you know, we pledge to take care of one another. So this time we'll take care of him with a little prayer. So that penguin protection uh, pledge, we've got to make sure that we take care of that. Do we get another question? We oh, we got another question. I was wondering if the question would be, do I have a song for him? You know, the last live stream I had a song for him, but I guess they don't want me to do a song. Shannon Tyrone said, I couldn't do any more live streams if I sang again. So, okay, here's the, I guess we do. Oh, this is a great question. Will there be Ignite? And as many of you upperclassmen remember, Ignite is the time when the class comes in together. We take our class picture out in the stadium from up above and so forth. So we're going to be welcoming the class of 2024. Uh, so the answer to that question is Ignite will not take place in its normal form. There will be class find tours in person and virtual sessions run by peer leaders the week before classes begin. So we'll be reaching out 
to the incoming students, class of 2024, and give you the opportunity if you'd like to have someone walk you around and show you the classes or if you have other questions to answer. And, and again, don't ever hesitate to call the Penguin Service Center. We are on call for any question you have. As time goes these next 30 days, let's do an amazing job. Let's make sure we're ready to go because I know we're excited about the preparations that we've had. And then when we come back, let's do an amazing job while we're back here because I know we all miss being with one another. I know we all want to progress toward our degree and on into the next chapter of our lives. And, and uh, so we're going to be ready for you. Uh, is there another question? Just a clarification. A clarification. We will post class delivery instructions how to find it on social media after this live, okay? So the modalities, the, you know, is it traditional, is it agile, that type of thing. So with that, thanks for tuning in. Uh-oh, they told me if I went more than an hour, I was going to be in trouble. But I, Ross, I think you started us late. So we went 60 minutes on the button. Can't wait to see you on Instagram. I don't even know what Instagram is. But I can't wait to see you on Instagram next week and then maybe back here on the Facebook Live in two weeks. Thanks so much and stay safe.